take a look at the other end of the roll, guys. That's a Canadian coin. Oh, what is this? I see an S mint mark on it. I almost thought it was a 59 S, which is, to my knowledge, not possible. I do not know what to make of this. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Coin Quest Pennies. That, of course, being the series where I take $25 boxes of pennies like this one, go through the rolls in the boxes looking for interesting and valuable coins that I can use to fill in my collection books. Now, if you watched the video I put out last week, I opened a $100 box of nickels doing the exact same thing with nickel collections, and I had a really cool roll in the box. That roll, of course, being the elusive double ender where you have two good finds right on the end of the roll. That, my friends, is a super rare occurrence. That being said, we have another one in this box of pennies, and it may even be better than the nickel roll. Let's take a look. All right, guys, here's our $25 box of pennies. Let's go ahead and open it up. Take a look at the rolls inside. Very nice. And we'll focus in over here on this roll right here. Take a look at that, guys. We do have an Ender. It's a 1958, I believe, so it's going to just barely make it as a Wheat Penny, but we do keep all of the Wheat Pennies that we find, so this is definitely a keeper. Now, prepare yourselves for this, because this is the really good find. Take a look at the other end of the roll, guys, right there. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's a Canadian coin, Canadian penny, and they made these from 1937 to 1952. I've definitely had these as enders before, but they don't come out that often, especially not as a double ender. So I'm very excited for this roll, and I'm very excited for the box as well. I think we're gonna do really well here. I am, of course, trying to fill out Canadian penny collections in addition to our American collection. You can see we're starting in 1920, and uh, we don't have any of the KG5s. This happens to be a KG6, so like I said, 37 up through 52. And you can see there's a few that are much more rare, like in the 1930s, I don't have any of those yet. So hopefully we end up getting a 1930s coin. If not, a 41 or a 44 or anything over here would do as as well. As we go through our $25 box of pennies today, we will of course be using the Quinn's Coins Penny Roll Hunting Placemat to aid us in our hunt. Across the front side of the placemat, you're going to see all the different types of pennies that you can find in your penny rolls. And then flipping it out over to the back side, we have a score system which we use to rate the boxes as we go through them. And we also have key date and low mintage lists there to help us identify rare coins as we find them. Of course, if you're interested in picking up one of these penny placemats to aid you in your own penny roll hunting, you can head on over to my website at quincecoins.com. I'll put links down in the description below. I also have nickel and silver stack placemats up there for you as well. With all that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the hunt. So we will of course be kicking this one off by opening up our double ender. We got that wheat penny ender right there and then our awesome King George the sixth right there. I'm going to be focusing in here on this end because I would love to see a 1930s come out of this roll, something that we could actually put into the collection. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're also looking for 1941, 1944, and it looks like 1950, which isn't super rare, but we do still need it in the collection. So I will take any of those dates, but uh, I don't know. It's pretty cool to see something like that on the end. You really don't see that very often. So, all right, here we go, guys. Here's the big reveal. That is an awesome coin right there. It's got a little bit of corrosion on it for sure, but uh, would love to see, like I said, anything in the 30s, 1941, 44, or 50. Here we go. Three, two, one. All right, so that is going to be 1945. So that is not what we're looking for. We do unfortunately already have that one. It is one year off of something that we could have used in the collection, like I said, 1944, but it is still really cool to get that nonetheless. It does definitely have some damage though. Uh, you saw the corrosion on the obverse. It's got a little bit of damage on the bottom side of the coin there on the reverse as well. 1945 is going to start us off though. That's a pretty dang old coin. I'll definitely take it. So let's see what we got over there on the other end. We already know we have a wheat penny, so we'll just kind of work our way towards it. I'm telling you though, it looks like we have a decent amount of copper already coming out in this roll. Of course, copper uh, being 1982 and prior. So let's take a look here. If we're going to get any wheat pennies, any other older Canadians uh, inside of this roll, I'm not seeing anything there. So we'll just try to get this, the rest of this roll open. These are super tightly packed. And there is going to be our wheat penny on that right side. Let's see if anything else is going to come out though. There's a 66 Canadian, not quite old enough for what we would consider a keeper. I keep anything 64 and before. As you can see here, that would be a young head Canadian up through 1964. But we do have one more wheat penny. It is just barely making it into that wheat penny range. 1958 Denver is the year on that one. So we'll flip that over to the reverse to see a nice shiny one cent right there. Pretty good shape considering it is a, how many years old is that now? 65-ish year old coin right there. Pretty good shape on that one, I have to say. So there we go, guys. Starting off with two finds. Obviously, we knew we would get at least two. It doesn't look like anything's going to be coming out of the middle of these rolls. 
Uh, we do have to keep our eyes out for 2009s. There are four varieties to look out for there, and they're all pretty rare compared to all of the other coins, for example, 2008, 2010, anything around that era. But we do actually have at least somewhat of an interesting ender here. I almost just blew right past it. It's a 2000 Canadian, so we got something good here. Let's see if we can get anything else on the roll. I do like to find Canadians. I like to collect Canadians. I'm a big Canadian coin guy for sure. So we'll work our way towards that 2000 Canadian there. Let's see if we got anything else that's gonna be coming out of this roll. Just kind of work our way towards it. I do see a lot of zinc here, so probably not gonna be getting as many wheat pennies as I thought, but hopefully I'll be proven wrong here. I'm really looking for anything pre-40s. I've been struggling with those for sure uh, with our collection books, but you can see 2000 Canadian right there. Pretty common Canadian penny, even though you can't get them really uh, in Canada anymore because they discontinued them 12 years ago now, which is just insane. We will put that one to the side, guys, and we got 48 more rolls to go, so let's keep her moving and see what else we can find. There we go, guys. It looks like Canadians are definitely going to be the theme of today's video, today's penny box. So take a look at that. We just got ourselves a young head Canadian. This one's a little bit newer than that King George VI that we just found. I uh, was just talking about these. I think we do need, it looks like, uh, 1953, a specific variant on that, which is tough to find. But other than that, we are good on these. I do like to keep these, though. They're pretty much like the 40s and 50s wheat pennies of the Canadian coinage. At least that's how I feel about them. So let's take a look, see what we've got for a year. Hoping for something in the 50s. Three, two, one. One. All right, 64, I'll take it. It's at least something. I have not got any other wheat pennies so far uh, on this box, so I will definitely take the Canadians. There's a 59, just about as close as you can get to being a wheat penny without actually being one. And here is roll number five. Let's see if we're gonna get anything on this roll. Man, they tightly pack the heck out of these penny rolls, so sometimes they're a little bit difficult to get apart. I'm definitely seeing more Canadians. I think I've had a Canadian coin come out of every single roll so far. That one is going to be a 1976, so nothing too crazy right there. We'll just put that one to the side. Oh, we do have a, it looks like a birth and early childhood, I wanna say. 2009 coming out here, so take a quick look at that. There we go, 2009, I'll definitely take it. And uh, I just tried to flip that like a Canadian for some reason. But anyway, that's a 2009, no mint mark on that bad boy. And let's see what else we got in the rest of this roll, see if any wheats are gonna pop out for us here. It's been a while. Since I've, you know, I've been struggling with uh, wheats lately, but uh, we'll see if our luck changes here, guys. So that's five rolls down. We got 45 to go. Let's see what we can find. Oh, uh, there we go. We do have a wheat coming out this time. Looks like it's going to be a 1944. Let's take a close up here. Yeah, 1944 wheat penny. Pretty common wheat right there. I'll take a 1943. How about that? I haven't seen one of those come out of a... Uh, machine wraps roll before, but uh, yeah, 44, I'll take it. We got another wheat penny coming out here, so not too bad so far. We're getting points from just about every roll here. Let's see if we can get any more. All right, we got another young head coming out here. I just saw the date on that. Let's take a look here. So it is going to be a little bit older than the first one we got, 1961, pretty nice uh, toning on it as well. And I just flipped that one like an American coin. Ooh, we got some damage there on the obverse, unfortunately, but overall pretty nice looking coin right there. And it's worth another five points on our score sheet. So this box has definitely been good to us so far. We got a nice looking Canadian right there. It's an 81 and it is super shiny. Let's just check the rest of these coins here and we'll take a close up of that. Cause you don't see them in that good condition at that age too often, 1981, look at that. Really nice right there. All right, guys, let's get on to the next. Oh, nice, we got another, oh, we got a couple of uh, finds here. I see a 2009 showing up there. So here we go, guys, check this out. We got another wheat penny coming out, 1957 Denver. So fairly common one there. And then we have 2009 coming out. Here, let me work my way towards it. And it looks like we have a Canadian right next to it as well. So there's a Canadian. And this is a really nice looking second in the series of four formative years right there. And uh, in 2009, it's got a scratch on it, unfortunately, but that's all right. 2009 Philadelphia, we got a Canadian, 1990, it looks like. I'll just put that to the side. So good stuff coming out of this box so far, guys. We're not even 10 rolls in, and we already have, it looks like, five, six, seven, seven, eight confirmed finds. I mean, that is a great ratio to have. It's just about finding one coin per roll. Seems like the only rolls we didn't find anything on were uh, the first two other than those enders, so... 
Looks like we're in for a treat here, guys. I'm excited to see what else we got. And there is another wheat. Look at that. So another 1944, it looks like. Now, we already do have that, but that's all right. I'll take another wheat penny, especially if it looks like that. At that age, shoot, I hope I look like that at that age. All right, here we go, guys. This is our 10th roll. What do you want to bet there's something good in there? There has been pretty much every roll leading up to it, so I think the chances are good. Let's take a look. Now, it's key to get some coppery-looking coins because uh, if you don't have copper-looking coins, you probably don't have anything good unless you're looking at a 2009 or hunting for errors and varieties. All right, let's see what we got. Don't let us down now. I hyped this roll up so much. Come on. Oh my gosh, is this going to be a, a no-go? Yeah, that's our first one in a while that didn't have anything in it. So we got 40 more rolls to go. Let's see what else we can get. Oh, we got a wheat in here for sure. Looks a little older. We're showing reverse here. So let's take a look. Get a little date reveal on that. Yeah, that could be older, I, I think. Could be newer as well, but I guess we'll find out here. Three, two, one. Oh yeah, definitely newer. 1958 Denver with that same corrosion as that first 58, which we had as an ender. So that's too bad, but guys, that is our fifth wheat on 11 rolls. So certainly can't complain. All right, I got a good feeling about this roll. I'm seeing a lot of coppery edges. So let's do a brief look through right to left as we typically do. All right, we got some Canadian action going on here. That is a 1991. Add it to our growing pile of Canadian coins post 64. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna do it for that roll. I think we do have a wheat penny here. I almost missed it because it's a weird looking coin. Kind of blends in and doesn't at the same time. 57 Denver once again. It looks like that five is maybe filled in a bit. That's kind of interesting. 1957 Denver, it's sort of a red color. Got that dark red brown patina to it. Pretty nice looking reverse though, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll give you that. But uh, there we go guys, that's wheat penny number six. I'll definitely take it. And this is why you should double check everything, guys. Wow, this is actually really weird. We actually had the uh, first two in the series come in order, and this is number three out of four for the 2009s. I almost missed it, and uh, if we get the last one, then that is going to complete the series for 2009s. And let's see, I think they've all been, yeah, they've all been Philadelphia as well, so no mint mark. All three 2009s, the first three of four have come out already, and that is kind of crazy. So we may end up getting all four of those this episode. We'll see. All right, we're coming up on a Canadian here. It could be good. Let's see. 70. All right, so 65 and 70. We're looking for the 67. There's a Centennial coin right there that has a special design on it that I like to pull out. So we'll see if we can get one here. There's another one, 1980-something. Add to the pile. All right, we've got a couple of Canadians coming out right in a row. There's an 85 and a 75. Moving on to roll number 20. This one looks weird. It's got a bend to it. Nothing special, though, just a 2018. Let's see if roll number 20 is going to bring us some luck. All right, let's do something drastic. Let's flip this over to the other side. We'll focus in here. Maybe, I don't know, maybe about right there. We got our Indian head sense showing right there. Would be great to find one of those. I'm not sure if I found one in this series yet. I can't remember now. It's been too long, guys. We have been doing this series since, I want to say, 2017, 2018. <laughs> it's crazy. And uh, like I said, this is box number 29. So getting up there. Definitely could, uh, could do more for sure. But we have a lot of coins still to be found. So going to be hitting these pennies hard. All right, what do we got here? Another 1944 coming out of roll number 21. How about that? That's like our third or fourth 1944 right there. So we'll take it. That is wheat penny number seven, it looks like. And that's going to do it for that roll. So we'll get on to the next. What in the world is that? <laughs> I haven't seen a penny looking that crusty probably ever. So what do I do? Grab it with the gloved hand? I think so. Let's see. Oh my gosh, it is just a memorial, and it looks completely destroyed. Like it has been sitting outside for a long time. It's even got a little bit of uh, dark blue on it, like a marker or something. But yeah, just a memorial sent there, so we didn't uh, we didn't lose a wheat penny to whatever that uh, corrosion was. So that's good. Let's see what else we can get in this roll. All right, guys, hitting the halfway point here with this roll. Something thicker right there for sure. What is that going to be? A 1970S, could it be? I think it's an S, so we do like to check these for the larger small date. Yeah, we do have a 70S right there. Again, I'm not good at figuring these out. I always forget. It's like some people forget their lefts from their right. Sometimes I forget my large and small date 
1970s's so forgive me on that one but uh, <laughs> let's see if we're gonna get anything else in that role I do put these aside just in case it's the desirable one because one is much significantly worth more than uh, the other now I'm actually really good at figuring out the 60 small dates and large dates and I know that we need a 1960 small date P so I'll be on the lookout for that Let's see what else we're going to get in this roll. We got a 1980 right there. Definitely a good amount of copper in these rolls compared to some of the other ones that I've seen lately. Uh, what is that? Uh, it's a 70 Denver, I think. All right, so it looks like that's going to do it for this one. I'll just double check. Yeah, that's a Denver. All right, guys, halfway through. Let's see what else we can get in the second half of the box. All right, we got a 2003 Canadian penny right there. I'm just going to check the collection because I know when you get to those later dates, towards 2012, it gets a little tougher. So 2003 P diadem is one that we still need. This is definitely diadem. So let me show you that. So this was a crossover year for Canadian pennies, 2003. Let's see if we get a P on that. Apparently we do not, because it would be underneath the bust of Queen Elizabeth there. So that is the diadem uh, design, and apparently we do not have the one we're looking for, even though it is way easier to find at 235 million versus 92 million on this one. So that is wild, but we'll just add that to the pile and continue to search for it, I suppose. See if we can find anything else in this roll. All right, guys, I think we have something here. We have to. It's looking very much like a wheat penny, and this is the one I'm talking about, so let's just see. It looks pretty worn down. Three, two, one. Oh, nice, that's a nice one to get right there, 1955. A lot of stuff going on with the 55. Obviously, that 1955 double die, which we don't appear to have here, it would be pretty obvious if we did have it. Uh, the 55S, I believe we still need in the collection, it is the only coin minted after 1940 that has that low mintage um, significance to it. So 55S, we're still on the lookout for. 1955 is definitely an interesting date for wheat pennies. So I'll take that right there. It's better than a 1944, or like our fourth or fifth 1944. So that's pretty cool. Let's see if we're going to get a double wheat roll here. I'm seeing a lot of copper, so I feel like it's definitely possible. Let's see. 1986. I thought that was a 56 for a second there. Oh, what is this? Oh, we did it, guys. And in a nice way, too. Let's take a look at this. So like I said, I've been struggling with those uh, pre-40s uh, wheat pennies. And there we got a 1936. That is sweet. So we get an 86 and then a 36 almost immediately after. They look very similar. So there we go, guys. 1936 Wheat Penny definitely shows some more wear than the other ones we've been finding. That is a much, much better coin to be finding right there. I am very excited then. Hopefully, we'll end up getting something in the 20s or 10s. I'm going to check the, the collection real quick. I'm almost positive we have the 36 plane, so probably not going to be going into the collection today. But, yep, we definitely do have that 1936. Of course, on the lookout for the mint marks. Those mint marks are always much more difficult to find on these older coins, especially when you get past back past 1940. You can see the mint marks are the ones that we're really struggling with. So we will be on the lookout for some more of those. Hopefully we can actually get one into the collection today, guys. We still are about at the halfway point. We have 22 more rolls to go. Let's see what else we can find. All right, there we go. We got a newer... Um... Canadian coin right there and like I was saying these are a little bit tougher to find I definitely find less of them than uh, all the other ones So uh, you can see it does have a mint mark as you would call it in Canada It's the Royal Canadian mint mark. So RCM if you see that abbreviation in a collection or a book That's what it stands for down below the bust of uh, Uncrowned Queen Elizabeth there. We'll go ahead and flip this over and see what we got for a year on it It may end up going into the collection here. So three two one. All right, 2010 RCM is how you would refer to that. So let's see if we need that 2010 RCM here in the collection. And it looks like the answer is it depends. If it's zinc, then we don't need it. If it's steel, then we do need it. I feel like it's not going to be steel just because I believe that most steel coins get called out of by the coin machine. So I can put a magnet to this. We'll be able to see if it's steel or not. If it sticks to the magnet, then it's steel and it's going into the collection. If not, then, well, then it's not. So let's just go ahead and figure that out. All right, so this is my magnet, fishing magnet. It's a little dirty and it's the only one I can find at the time, but let's see if it sticks. Here we go. No, no stick whatsoever. So it is zinc. 
and it's not going into the collection. Oh, there we go, guys. We just got uh, another Wheat Penny coming out of this roll. I thought it might be. Again, I saw that uh, sort of worn down look. 1941 Denver, so getting back there, and we do have a mint mark. I'll have to check. I feel like we probably don't need that one, but there is a possibility. And uh, yeah, we don't need that one. We already have the 1941 Denver in the collection. So that is probably the closest one of getting into the collection so far though, with the mint mark and being older like that. Definitely a nice harvest of wheat pennies coming out of this box so far. Yeah, let's just go ahead and keep looking and see if we can find some more. Oh, there's something we're looking for right there, guys. At first I thought it was a bird scent, but it looks like it's just going to be a little bit older than that, actually. It's going to be one of those young head Canadians. So let's see if we can get something uh, in the 50s. That's sort of what we're looking for on these, but uh, I'll take 60s as well. Let's go ahead and find out. Three, two, one. All right, 63. So I think we got a 61, 63, and 64. So dancing all around the 60s there. Hopefully we can pull ourselves into the 50s as well. You know, I thought it, it always feels like once you get something on the end, you're like, oh my gosh, that means that my chances of getting something in the middle of the roll are going to be greater as well. So that's kind of how I felt with the KG6, you know, maybe we'll have another one of those in the roll. And it uh, turns out it doesn't always work out that way. I've actually had an Indian head penny on the end of the roll and figured that that meant there must be a good chance there's another one in there, but there wasn't. So that's just kind of a weird statistics thing. Non-intuitive, I would say. We just keep trucking on, guys. It is a numbers game at the end of the day. The more coins you look through, the more stuff you're gonna find. So we'll just keep looking, guys. We got 20 more rolls to go. Interesting uh, corrosion once again. Oh, I don't know what this is. Well, I think it's a Lincoln penny. It's not like a wheat penny, or sorry, not like a Indian head or anything, but it could be a wheat penny, I guess. That one is not, so we will continue on. Oh, nice. We got a wheat penny right off the bat. Let's see if any more are gonna poke out here. It's possible, but this one looks pretty good, guys. I think uh, we have a good chance on this at an older coin, something pre-40s, because it is pretty worn down. So let's take a look. Yeah, definitely worn down uh, wheat stalks right there. I am definitely hoping for something pre-40s, something with a mint mark. Those are the two requirements we have here. Let's get it, guys. Three, two, one. All right, I'll take it. One of two ain't bad. 1938 wheat penny coming out there for us. No mint mark, but uh, 38's not too bad. So that is awesome, guys. We got another old one right there, all coming out of the second half of this box. I think the second half is looking pretty good for wheat pennies. That first half was looking really good for Canadians. So let me know down in the comments below, guys. What do you prefer to hunt, Canadians or wheat pennies? Or maybe you don't even get Canadians and uh, it won't apply to you. But guys, we do have, it looks like, another wheat penny in this roll. And it is once again going to be... 1957 Denver. So it's like our third or fourth 57 Denver. We also have three or four 1944s. So definitely uh, a trend in this box. That's a nice looking coin though. It's still got a bit of patina on it. It almost looks like it's been acid treated, uh, cleaned in a way. So uh, I can't say that I love the look of the coin, but uh, I do like the shine and uh, I do like the details that it has. So that is another wheat penny guys. Great, great stuff so far. Let's keep going and see what else there is to find. Ah, oh, nice, nice. So, about four coins in to that roll right there, we already got ourselves a wheat. And I see a Canadian right there, it's an 81. All right, so let's take a look at that wheat penny. Uh, hmm, also got some wear on it, but I feel like this is not gonna be pre-40s. I will happily be proven wrong. Here we go, three, two, one. All right, yeah, 1946, that is the first of that date we've seen in today's box of pennies. Again, pretty common right there. So nothing too crazy. Maybe there's going to be more in here though. Let's take a look real quick. Haven't seen too many 2009s come out. Hopefully I haven't missed any along the way. But let's see if we're going to get anything. Uh, let's see, 64 there. We got a Canadian coming up. Nice looking 73 there. But uh, we'll just throw it back for the next person. I think that's an 83 Canadian, and I think that's good. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, we do have a 2009, just as I was talking about them. So it's not going to complete our set. Uh, it's not the presidency that we were looking for, as you can see right here on the placemat. That's the one we were looking for. But it is going to be that birth and early childhood, number one of four in the series. So that is our fourth 2009. Looks like Lincoln's going backwards in his progression towards the presidency there with that roll. And uh, here we go, guys. Looks looks like this is our uh, 16 left, or sorry, 15 left after this one. And I just dumped a bunch of coins into my rejects, which I didn't want to do. 
but sometimes that's how the rolls come apart. There's not much you can do about it. All right, let's see if this roll's got anything for us. Oh, there we go, we got another 2009. So we do have more 2009s coming out for us. And it's almost like we're repeating those three steps in Lincoln's progression. We got birth and early childhood, formative years. Are we gonna get the professional life again? Well, I guess we'll find out and see. All right, guys, we're dialed in on 2009s here. We're showing those on the back of the placemat. Let's see if we can get ourselves another one here. That I think it would be like three in a row. What the heck is this? What in the world? I think it's a 60s coin, but it's just super beat up. Nothing too crazy there. I thought we might have, uh, one time I pulled an Indian head out that exact same way, so. I was looking for one of those moments. I didn't get it, but that's all right. Let's see if we can get ourselves something good in this roll. All right, we do have a wheat penny in this roll, though. We're coming up on it here. So there is our wheat penny. There's, a, oh, a 1960 right behind it, and it is a Philadelphia, so we'll want to check that for the small date. That one is definitely a large date. You can see the top of the six hangs way over. So definitely not going to be a small bait 1960 that we need right there. Here's our wheat penny. I don't have a whole lot of trust in this one being old, so we'll just flip it quick. Three, two, one. Yep, 56 Denver, so pretty common coin right there. Let's keep on looking here, see if we're gonna get ourselves anything else. A lot of uh, zinc looking coins here, so uh, I think our best bet here for the last part of this roll would be a 2009 but I do not see any, so we will go ahead and get on to the next. All right, what do we got here? It looks like we may have a wheat. I believe that's a 1950. Hopefully it's not a 59. Yeah, it's definitely a 1950 right there, so nice looking coin. We definitely, I wanna say, don't need it. Yeah, let's see, <laughs> I just wanna double check. Yeah, we still need the 54 for whatever reason. We do not have the 54, but the 50 we do, so. Ooh, that is nice looking though. Really sharp right there. Again, though, it looks like it may have been acid treated at one point, so I'm not sure if I trust it to be going into the collection, but really nice looking coin nonetheless. It's probably the nicest looking wheat penny we have pulled today. All right, we've got an older looking Canadian here. Could be something good. All right, 64, it, uh, you know, it's something. It's not the craziest find in the world, but it is something. It's another young head, 64 Canadian right there. We certainly have a big pile of finds and uh, I have no doubt that this is gonna be a high scoring box, probably over 100 points. But nothing's been spectacular so far. I mean, we've definitely got some cool stuff, but nothing's uh, blowing my socks off, you know? All right, we got, what, eight rolls remaining. Let's see if we can get something, I don't know, back into the 20s would be cool. Something with a mint mark as well would be amazing. Oh, what is this? Is that a wheat penny? I can't tell. I see an S mint mark on it, which is not super common. Is that a what the heck is this? 53S? It's a wheat penny for sure. I almost thought it was a 59S, which is, to my knowledge, not possible. Unless it was, no, they didn't do proofs back then either in, in San Francisco. So what the heck is this, a 53S? I, I'm not sure. I'll have to check if we need anything like that. We need a 54S and a 55S, so. That's the only possibility that uh, this would be going into the collection is if it was either one of those. I do not know what to make of this. I wanna say 53S, but I don't know. I just can't tell because it's so messed up. I might have to get my microscope out and we'll take a look at it. Actually, you know what? That sounds like a great idea. I got my microscope out here. Let's take a closer look at it under the camera. So we'll just slide it into view here. Uh, Yeah, so I see the bottom of something. It certainly looks like a nine. However, that to my knowledge is not possible that, that this could be a 1959. I don't know if somebody intentionally made that damage to make this hard on us, but it's certainly not easy. I, I think that my best guess is that it's a 53, but I don't know. I really just don't know. So this is gonna be uh, probably a mystery for quite a while. I mean, that's about as close in as I can get you to seeing that date. You can clearly see it's an S and uh, let me just double check something real quick. Yeah, so after 55, they didn't make pennies in San Francisco, at least not for circulation as far as I know. So this would have to be a 55 or prior, um, but uh, it just looks like a nine to me, which is the most bizarre thing. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think about that one. Definitely a interesting find right there. I don't think it's gonna be going into the collection unless it's a 55. I mean, it's totally possible. It has the tail kind of like a five would or possibly a three. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and uh, I'll try to uh, put this into my collection accordingly.
How about this one? This one also looks older. Oh, nice! So we got something into the 50s there, so... That is going to be a young head Canadian, 1959. Just barely squeaked into the decade. And let's flip it the right way so you guys can see that upright. 1959, and as you can see here, we got young head Canadian of Queen Elizabeth right there. So let's see what else we got here in this roll. And it looks like that's gonna do it for that roll. So four rolls remaining. My gosh, this is like the most zinc looking roll that I have had so far. And we do have some sort of weird substance here. It's like glue. Yeah, it's it's definitely a Lincoln Memorial penny. So not too interested in figuring out what the date is on that one, even though it's covered up in glue. So those last couple rolls really had nothing in them. So hoping these uh, very last two rolls of the box are gonna give us something good. Should be able to get at least a wheat penny or a young head out of them. I mean, we have got so many wheat pennies so far, and I'm very excited to show you guys the wrap up just to show exactly how many we were able to get. It's it's quite a few. All right, we got a 60 right there. 1960 could be the small date? Question uh, mark. No, that is a large date, so not interested in it. And. I think that is going to do it for the second to last roll, guys. It's definitely slowed down here in the last few, but uh, let's see if we're just maybe saving it all for a finale here on the very last roll of the hunt. Overall, really great stuff. Um, really weird coin that we found there at the end. I still have no idea what the date is on it, but uh, yeah, so we're coming down to it here, guys. Let's see if we're gonna get anything else out of this very last roll. Get a Canadian at least, so that's a 1982. So we'll throw it in the pile there. And coming down to the end here, I'm not really seeing anything. So I guess that's going to do it, guys. We'll go ahead and jump into a wrap up. We'll tally up all the points on the box and see how we did. All right, guys, welcome to the wrap up on today's box. We had a heck of a box today. And you can see it right there with the wheat pennies, guys. Starting off with the wheat pennies from the 40s and 50s. I got them in stacks of two here. So we got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 from the 40s and 50s, including that, you know, confusing coin right there, which is a little bit messed up. It definitely has a San Francisco on it, our only S out of that Wheat Penny era, and uh, we do not know the date on it. So that is gonna add up for a total of 70 points. 14 times five is 70. And then our wheats from the 10s, 20s, and 30s. We didn't get any from the 10s or 20s, but we did get a couple from the 30s. And you can take a look at them right there, 1936 and 1938 for a total of 20 points so already doing great guys 90 points on those alone then come down here to the 2009s we did get five of those and there may be more i tend to miss these so five points right there because it's five 2009s times one a piece is five points we're up to 95 points on the american coins but the fun doesn't end there guys we got a whole bunch of awesome canadian stuff including a kg6 canadian ender that ended up being a 1945 plus five young head Canadian coins right there that you can see. So there's a better look at them there, guys. There's five points on each young head, so that's five times five for a total of 25, and 10 points on the KG, so another 10 points right there. Brings us up to 35 points on the Canadians. You add it all together, and what do you get? A grand total of 130 points, guys. Anything over 100 is great. 130, I would consider that exceptional. Despite the fact that nothing went into the collection, this definitely restored my faith in pennies they have been really difficult lately and i think that uh, this definitely shows me that it's still out there we got the 30s we just need to get a little bit further back into the 20s and 10s and then we'll be in business real quick before i end the video just want to remind you if you're interested in picking up one of these penny placemats to aid you in your own penny roll hunting you can head on over to my website at quinscoins.com i'll put links down in the description below i also have nickel and silver stacking placemats up there for you as well with that being said that's going to pretty much do it for this one thank you so much for watching make sure to go down below and leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe for new because I post new videos like this every single week, always bring you along with the hunts and having a good time. And as always, I'm Quinn, and this is Quinn's Coin signing out, and I will see you in the next episode of Coin Quest Pennies.